Jerry Moore. Jerry Moore. What's up, my people, and welcome back to the SN95 Power Channel. So, been doing so much content on the red car over here, I've been neglecting Project Kendra. So, long story short, Kimberly is not happy with the sound system in Project Kendra. So, I'm going to start a um, stereo upgrade again on Project Kendra. So, I've already upgraded the head unit. The car came with Alpine Type R 5x7s in the rear, but the door speakers are the stock speakers. So what I did, I went to the junkyard and I got the six and a half inch enclosures for the convertibles. And since the Alpine R's are already in the rear right now, I'm gonna take those Alpine R's, the 5x7s, put those in the doors up front, and we're gonna throw these in the rear. So, I didn't get anything super expensive, but um, these are like Amazon Recoil. Um, I got these off Amazon, the brand's Recoil. They're like $50. For both speakers, I think this is saying the total wattage of these two speeds is 300 watts and 150 RMS for both these speakers. Now, nothing fancy out of the box. The six and a halves. So let me show you what these are going in. So with these, this will help. Uh -oh, I didn't do my homework. So I'm gonna have to modify this because, um, yeah, the opening is a lot larger. I didn't do my homework. So we're gonna have to get a Dremel. We're gonna have to open this up some to get these in here. And actually, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy that this is just a straight driver. Now, I'm gonna have to get some kind of uh, crossover just to filter out any highs that's gonna come to this. And if that's the case, I can just get a, um, a tweeter and put up in there and just make a component set out of this. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I need to make a template on the cutout on this. Because this six and a half recoil woofer is bigger than this whole enclosure. So we're going to need to modify it. And this is a good template that I can use. So I'm just going to get this lined up as best as I can. I'll use my little die grinder and just try to get this as open to um, my marking as possible. All right, my gimbal is dead, so I'm not going to be able to record all this like I really wanted to, but basically now, I'm just gonna mount the woofer. I wanna get the bolt holes lined up. You know, it really doesn't matter because I'm going to create some new mounting holes, but you know, I have, Three mounted up, I have this one missing, so I'll put two extra bolts right here, maybe one extra one right there. For the tweeter, you know, so it would sit in here like this. And now, because, you know, this tweeter doesn't matter as far as having a sealed enclosure behind it, you know, this can sit forward just a little bit. So I'll still put two screws in here just to hold it in place, but it's not. You can kind of see the gap 
that's gonna have. And that's why I wasn't too concerned about trying to have um, the whole precise on that one. It's just a tweeter. All right, so I just used a little foam. Actually, this foam came out of the enclosure. And I'm just making a little, almost like a little ceiling surface just to try to help make around this. It's not gonna be a perfect seal, but the better the seal, the better the response or the performance of the uh, woofer. Got the woofer in the position I want it, and I'm just gonna use these self-tapping screws. I'll do one, two, three in that hole. I'll do one, two over here, and maybe one over here someplace. All right, those are my mounting bolts installed. Before you do this, of course, without saying, make sure you have it wired up. Now, the good thing about this enclosure, it tells you which one is for the woofer, which one is for the tweeter. And so I'm going to mount a um, spade or something on the other side of this capacitor and we'll mount this. All right, I only needed one. It's in here, it's not going anywhere. So I need to hack this up somehow to get uh, my connections going to my crossover network. Now I'm just gonna mount this right on here. Kinda like that. So let me mark this up and um, drill these. All right, so I got the speakers all assembled. We're back over at the build garage at Project Kendra. So I have to take this out. This out. This is what I mean. Where um, this piece of I, I thought all the Burt's had this enclosure, but obviously this one doesn't. So it's only two bolts holding this in. I believe it's just one right there, one right there, and then I can pop this out, and then I can put the um, other enclosure in. What we have right here is this infinity 10 inch um, enclosure. These are the Alpine speakers. One thing I don't like about this Alpine subwoofer, you know, you would think that they would have a terminal block. It's supposed to be 250 RMS. And you just have these like little jinky 18 gauge wire. I don't know what gauge this is, but these are some teeny tiny wires. You know, for this to allegedly have 250 RMS. So let's get the vert in the garage. Um, let's figure out how we're gonna mount this. The other cool thing about this right here is they give you this mounting base. So I can just mount the base on the car, in the car. And if I ever need to take this out, just unscrew this thing. and subwoofer just pops right out. So let's figure out where we're gonna mount the base and um, pull those door panels off. All right, so the big thing for me now is figuring out how I'm going to mount this. So when I mount it, I obviously want the little uh, retractable knob facing towards me. want three points of contact for my um for my boats so here 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 so now i just have to worry about if i have enough height to get this in here so let's pull this out let's go attach the subwoofer to it and see if i have enough room Survey says no. I do not have enough room to put that over there. Gosh, I um, really only have one mounting option, and that's like this right here. So I was hoping I can get that back further, but um, 
Yeah, it looks like this is my only option on this. So here's my solution, just my solution to this horrible wire that's coming out of this plug. You have this 2018 gauge, whatever. So I just made it just a real short piece to this six gauge. So we're gonna plug this in and figure out how much uh, wire we need, cut it to the appropriate length and figure out how we're gonna do this carpet. All right, I got the setup woofer mounted. The wires are routed. So I have a fuse box here and I have one right by the battery too. Up next is um, yanking these out and putting those in the door. So one thing every SN95 owner hates doing is removing these uh, door panels. So you have this like little gap right here. You can pull a screwdriver in there and pry that out. You know, you gotta pry this out. There's like a little um, tab in there that you have to pull out. And I pretty much thinks that thinks I think that's it. So just take your time with it. Don't be intimidated. Um, if you try to hulk it, you can break something, but just take your time. I'm not gonna walk you through doing this. You can um, check my first car installation, car audio installation video, or check other YouTube videos on how to remove this. You know, LMR has a pretty good video. So let me take this off and get the um, OEM speaker out. All right, so this is the little OEM driver. Nothing special about it. And this is the plug that you're gonna have to um, splice up to use for your new speaker. So here's a quick comparison if you ever wonder if it's worth upgrading the stock speaker. So this is the magnet of the Alpine the magnet of the stock speaker. This is a true three-way speaker. This is just a cone. So, I don't think there's a tweeter in the center of this, it's just a cone. So, definitely worth spending the time and the money upgrading the stock speakers. All right, we got the speakers hooked up. We have the subwoofer hooked up. So now we need to get the carpet back up in here. So the plan is just to make a cutout around the base of this. And so I'll have the factory looking trunk with that just cut out around it. All right, we got everything back installed. Let's um, take it out and see how it sounds. Well, that didn't last long. I had wanted to give y'all a uh, full review on how this thing sounds, but it's dead. Um, it lasted probably about, uh, gosh, a month. <laughs> and this thing um, does not output any sound. So I have a um, warranty claim on it right now. I'm just waiting for um, Infinity to send me the um, information on how to send this to them to get it fixed. But as of now, it's dead in the water. I do like how it fit in the trunk. And, you know, I was about to say, as you can see, but you know, I have um, plenty of room left for storage. It really didn't take up a lot of room. It did have a, a nice um, low, that's, you know, I wouldn't really call it low, but you know, this thing would hit, you know, was it, vibrating the depths of my soul absolutely not but it it really satisfied me and my bass needs for you know the rap music that i listen to and anything that had like a a, a nice 808 to it so now would i endorse getting this I, I have to say no and it did satisfy my bass need but it didn't hit hard like i really wanted it's, it's the it's the base I needed and not what I deserved um, for all my Batman fans out there. But yeah, you can buy a, a better setup for the price. You know, I, I just really wanted a one piece unit and to really get the kind of frequency response that I want, it 
it has to be a a um a ported enclosure now my guy um greg coop frostbite he has a nice single 12 inch enclosure so that's the dilemma is you need volume to move that air and if you want that deep low base you're going to sacrifice your trunk so i'm going to continue to look and find that good medium spot for me but i don't really think this is it so i paid for it i'm kind of stuck with it so i'm going to get it fixed but um yeah give me some of your um ideas um systems or enclosures that you guys are rocking and do you have any trunk space with your subwoofer in there so i appreciate y'all rocking me with this video and until next time god bless